Okay, so a lot has happened since the last update I gave you on Omicron just a couple of days ago. So this update is for December 23rd, 2021. Information on Omicron is changing almost by the minute. And so if you are watching this after December 23rd, 2021, just keep that timestamp in mind. Okay. Looking at cases globally here, the daily new confirmed COVID-19 cases per million, as you can see, we still have that vertical increase in the United States, France, United Kingdom, Canada. I put New Zealand in there because New Zealand is particularly vulnerable. They do not have a lot of prior infection um, or vaccination at this point. So New Zealand is definitely a country to watch as Omicron rolls out across the globe here. Cumulative confirmed COVID-19 cases. This is since the very beginning of the pandemic. Just for you to have an idea of how far we've come, the United States has over 50 million cases and uh, India at over 30 million. You can see other countries like the United Kingdom, France, Germany, and Canada. I wanted to give this picture to you because we're going to talk about where Omicron might take us from here. And so it's good to have a, a starting point uh, to see where we are, where we are today, and where we are probably going with this incredibly transmissible variant. So there are some indications now that Omicron may be less severe in nature. There is some reason to hope that this may not be as severe as Delta or other variants that we've seen. However, there are some caveats because with increased transmissibility, with the incredible transmissibility we're seeing, we will still see hospitalizations and we will still see deaths, though it is largely unknown to what extent. This is some information from South Africa. This is their most recent update on statistics. Uh, so you can see that they are still experiencing 21,000 new cases per day. They reported 75 new deaths in the last 24 hours. Who is dying? Well, according to the latest report, uh, there were 309 people for which uh, vaccination status was known, and 13% of these people were fully vaccinated. 87% were unvaccinated or not fully vaccinated. So the unvaccinated or partially vaccinated continue to be at higher risk than the vaccinated. Omicron, of course, we know this is much more transmissible. Another concern with Omicron is immune escape. So we are seeing a great deal of reinfection. People who have had COVID-19 before, around 40 to 60 percent, who have previously had COVID-19 are presenting with reinfection. So gone is the theory that a COVID-19 infection greatly protects you from another infection. Asymptomatic infection is also much higher than with previous variants. So we have people walking around uh, in higher percentages that are carrying the virus that may become symptomatic in the next few days and do not know it and could be spreading it to other people. The infection and hospitalization rate, many cases will go undetected. However, the rate of hospitalization per infection may be 90 to 96% lower for Omicron than for Delta. This is very generous. This is very preliminary data based on modeling, and I will give you the source in the description of this video and in the coming slides. The infection fatality rate may also be much lower. However, when we have this many cases and this many infections, we are going to see, like I said, deaths, and we are going to see severe disease, so, though hopefully it will be minimal. So the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation uh, released a report recently, and you can go onto the description of this video and listen to the entire report and look at all of the modeling that they have. I've summarized it here. Uh, so this is modeling, uh, but they've put together some fairly decent data on this. Three billion, they are predicting three billion or more Omicron cases globally over the next two to three months. Detection rates will be low. We are already seeing that testing capacity, especially in Canada, is stretched to the limit and we are seeing uh, many people who cannot even get testing right now, hours long waits for testing, no rapid tests available. And so we, there are going to be so many more infections that we even know also because people are asymptomatic in some cases. There will be a global surge in hospitalizations, smaller than the previous Delta surge though, is what they're predicting. Global deaths will increase, but to a lesser extent, which is good. 
because of the increased transmissibility and immune escape from vaccines, um, this will lead to as many infections in two to three months as we have seen during the entire pandemic. So you can see this is really a tsunami of cases here, and I'm not trying to provoke fear, um, but we are going to, the next two to three weeks or two to six weeks is going to be quite, quite an event globally. Daily infections will peak mid-January at over 35 million cases per day. And for you to put that into perspective, Delta was 12.5 to 13 million infections per day in India. Many infections are asymptomatic, as I said, and will not be detected. So the infection detection rate will drop and the peaks of infection will be smaller. So it'll be important to watch hospitalizations and deaths. Uh, the US, they're predicting that it will peak at approximately 400,000 cases per day. As of today, the US is sitting at about 150,000 cases per day. Now, this is from the BC COVID-19 modeling group. They released a new report, I believe it was yesterday, and they are looking at the Omicron model projections for healthcare demand, because of course, the restrictions that are in place in British Columbia and different places in Canada are all about preserving hospital capacity. So they looked at three different scenarios here. So A being if Omicron is 30% as severe, B if it's 50% as severe, and C if there is no reduction in severity. So you can see here with the modeling that they've done, uh, it shows that all the levels considered lead to rapid growth in hospital demand far in excess of capacity. And this is just because of the sheer number of infections that Omicron will cause. They also say that the probability that an immunized person needs hospitalization is reduced by multiplying the severity factor. The length of hospital stays for all infected by Omicron is reduced by the same severity factor. So you can see that no matter how much severity is decreased, we are still going to see a major pressure on our healthcare system. Assuming that the Omicron variant is doubling every 3.5 days, which it is right now, they looked across the top here, you can see at vaccine efficacy against reduction of infection. So if the vaccines are only 90% effective at reducing infection versus 50% versus 10%, and then across the side here, you can see that they are looking at severity. So in different degrees of severity here. And in the chart on the right, lower right, you can see Omicron severity relative to previous variants starting at 100%, and as the color gets lighter, goes down to 10%. So with this modeling, it all looks very similar. And so the conclusion here that they're drawing is that regardless of the value of the unknown parameters, we expect the number of people in hospital to exceed that previously seen in the pandemic by mid January. So with Omicron, we are also seeing waning immunity. And the concerns with that are, is that we have infection acquired immunity and vaccine acquired immunity, but both of these wane over time. Waning is relatively fast for prevention of infection. However, for hospitalization and death, it is much slower. In terms of vaccination and types of vaccines, Moderna is showing the slowest waning of immunity, followed by Pfizer, AstraZeneca, and Johnson & Johnson having the fastest rate of waning immunity at this point. They emphasize that mask use cuts transmission substantially and reduces cases and hospitalizations. They say this is the most effective strategy to manage Omicron right now, and we've talked about this before, an N95 mask or a medical mask with a cloth mask over top or a two or three layer mask. This will help but Omicron is so transmissible that you could possibly still get it if you are in an indoor closed crowded space for a long enough period of time with someone who is infectious. They also recommend that testing policy needs to change. Uh, let me know where you are in the world. In Canada, we are already seeing testing is becoming overwhelmed. It's going to be impossible to track every single case and uh, we need to rethink what testing is going to look like, especially for people who test positive and maybe are asymptomatic and are not able to go to school, go to work. So many people are going to get this infection within a small period of time. It could really have a very significant economic disruption. 
So they emphasize the shift should be to focusing on hospital admissions rather than cases. And I would have to agree with that. What can you do to protect yourself? A third booster dose substantially increases protection against Omicron. The unvaccinated or never infected remain at highest risk. And we can still see that there is a possibility of severe infection and there will be some deaths. And these are the people who are at most risk, most risk for that. Vaccination remains very important. It's not too late to get your first dose or second dose or third dose of vaccine. Previously infected, if you've been previously infected before and you're vaccinated, you do have more protection than if you're um, not vaccinated how to protect yourself as an individual. So if you can get that third dose of vaccine, it does work and it will help you. Wear a high quality mask like a KN95 or an N95. If you are at high risk due to age or comorbidities, avoid indoor gatherings for now until we know more about the severity of this variant. We still do not know if Omicron is going to cause long COVID and we don't know if there are any other inflammatory syndromes that it could cause. We are very early in the early stages of this. So there are still a lot of unknowns, even if disease is mild. We know that with long COVID, some people have had very mild disease and still had a very long post-viral illness. So this remains a disease that I don't think anyone should be exposing themselves to voluntarily. Therapeutics for COVID-19. So the Ontario Science Table released some information that I will tag in the description of this video. If you're mildly ill, the options for monoclonal ant antibodies against Omicron are very restricted. There is only one monoclonal ant antibody in Canada that is working right now. The other ones are not working against Omicron. Uh, but we do have some simple solutions. So inhaled budesonide, so a steroid inhaler that can be used if you are mildly ill. Fluvoxamine, which is an antidepressant. I've already spoken about that on this channel does seem to have some fairly good evidence in protection, protecting against severe illness. And we also have Pfizer's Paxlovid, which has not yet been approved in Canada. It is a protease inhibitor and it helps to reduce the replication of the virus. There are some significant drug interactions with this one, but those could be managed at pharmacy level. And both fluvoxamine and the Paxlovid would be oral treatments that could be prescribed by a family physician and then just taken at home and hopefully that would keep people out of the hospital. So there are treatments and of course if you get more severely ill there are other options like dexamethasone and uh, remdesivir and, and so on. The Ontario Science Table also released some good resources that I will put in the description of this video about different scenarios that people have asked about uh, how to make decisions as to gatherings and different uh, events that you might participate in over Christmas. So I'll put that in the, the description as well. I cannot emphasize enough the importance of fresh filtered air. This is an airborne virus. If you will remember the Swiss cheese model, we have all of these layers of protection and good ventilation should not be downplayed. Uh, so maintaining physical distance, running your HVAC under the uh, feature where it just constantly runs rather than just automatic, consider borrowing a HEPA, HEPA filter, turn it on and just leave it on if you have anyone in your, in your house for any extended period of time, uh, leaving a fan on, those types of things. These are things that are very important, can help to reduce the viral load and reduce the chance of infection. So I just wanted to give you a quick update. I hope that that was helpful. Uh, my final message would be just stay safe. Do not panic, do not be fearful, but do be wise in your decisions. Uh, please do not feel pressured to attend indoor gatherings if you are not comfortable. Don't feel pressured to have people in your house if you are not comfortable. And take time to practice self-care. Take care of yourself and do some deep breathing, meditation, whatever it is that you need to do to help take care of yourself, your body, your mind this holiday season. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care and stay healthy. Bye-bye.